these rocks are known as the cow and craft rocks which form the edge of Ilkley Moor which lies just beyond them which is where I'm heading now. Unfortunately I didn't have much success at Brinham Rocks so I've come here to Ilkley Moor where there are some equally interesting rock formations. Now, I am no geologist, as I've said many times, but I have read the little uh, sign at the entrance and tried to find out what I could. And apparently these, these rock structures, and you can see it around here, see all this sandstone here? So 320, 325 million years ago, this would have all been kind of like a sandy um, uh, series of streams. And then as the Ice Age came in, everything got compacted over the years. And then the rocks start pushing out and that's when these rocks started pushing out. And of course the sandstone is, is brittle and some sometimes it's harder. And I think the last Ice Age here was 13,000 years ago. Um, but you can see how all these natural fissures have come into the rock. Like here, you see that there, that natural fissure. I sound like such an expert, I'm really not. But you can see there's another fissure going across horizontally like that. And if you look up there, you can see like that looks like it's about to fall any, any day now. Right, well, moving away from here, let's go out onto the moor, where I think about a 20 minute walk away across the moor is what's known as the Twelve Apostles, which is a standing stone circle. A very, very old prehistoric and known to be the most desecrated prehistoric stone circle in the United Kingdom. So depressing, but let's go and see what sort of condition it's in now. You know, I wasn't really planning to do this walk today. Uh, I was just going to come and have a quick look and show you guys and then uh, head off. It was going to be a visit, but there's no roads into the moor to take you to these standing stones. It's all got to be done on foot, I believe, or a helicopter. And uh, so here we are. So I may not make it, but uh, let's see how we go. Because uh, time is not on my side. Wasn't planning to be here for very long, but it's so picturesque up here. I'm going to take a look, share it with you guys, see how far we get. I have driven across the States uh, four times, coast to coast, by myself. And the places that struck me as being my favourite places in all the world so far are places where there aren't any people. So that's deserts. But Moorland is also becoming one of my favourite places to be. Mainly because it's <laughs> it's lack of people. <laughs> I just there's just something natural about it. Although I have to say this pathway here up onto the moors is well walked, shall we say? These rocks all smoothed by foot, footsteps, people's feet, foot flow, as they say in the marketing world. I'm adding to it myself, so look at this, it's a stream which I'm guessing comes straight off the water table. <laughs> I'm no stream expert. But what I love is these slabs of rock and how they're just naturally, I mean you could see very easily how these standing stones could be built. You know, if this is what the rock was doing. Well, do you want the uh, the good news or the bad news first? <laughs> the, 
bad news is it's got extremely blustery and raining and I'm not really decked out to do this today. These are wild moors and although I am seeing the odd group of walkers walking by, they're all geared out in proper shoes and proper waterproofs. I do have a waterproof on but I am just wearing Adidas trainers so I'm not really uh, fit for purpose today. So I think this is one I might have to pass on and come back to sometime in the future. I'm sorry to say that, to be honest. You can't predict the weather. <laughs> you, all right, you can predict the weather. I didn't do it this time, but I will next time, because I've got lots of plants, lots of, lots of irons in the fire, as they say. Good morning, and I've come back to Ilkley Moor to go and see the Twelve Apostles, which are about two miles, I think, across the moor. Not accessible by car, so I literally have to have to walk it. Oh my me! I'm walking on Ilkley Moor, which is near Keighley in West Yorkshire. Um, probably in the UK most famous for the song Ilkley Moor Batat which stands for on Ilkley Moor without a hat. That's like local dialect. And ironically, not only do I not have a hat, I haven't brought a jacket. I haven't brought anything. anything. I've got water, but I've got no uh, cover because today is down for being a warm day, although showers are possible. But I'm risking it. I'm going to fight the weather and just go for it. It's a beautiful day. I'm looking forward to this walk. It's reasonably quiet today. There's not that many people about. Although this is a bit of a hot spot for visitors. I'm not sure if this used to be a quarry or, or what really. But it's an impressive cutout in the landscape. That mountain ahead, that hill. I need to get to the top of that. So I'm kind of avoiding going up the, I'm avoiding going up this pathway here and taking the lazy route over here, just over this first brow where that little path in the foreground disappears as a little river. And then I'm going up that main hill, which is gonna be a killer for me. Look at this here. Again, is that like a quarry perhaps? When I see dugouts in the landscape like this, you. I actually assume this has been quarried. But that's a, an impressive area of land right there. Right, I'm, I'm at the, uh, the river. Uh, it's quite rocky <laughs> to get down there. Your, your risk here is twisting an ankle. I mean, 100% because it is super rocky. You can hear the river. I'm now rock hopping. Then I hop onto this one, that one, and then up, up there. Oh, my trousers getting caught in my knees. Ah! River completed. No problem. Right, this says the start of the big climb. Oh God, the views, man. Let me turn around and show you. Look at that. I'm almost getting vertigo. There's a walker behind me. I'll definitely let her overtake me. But uh, it's quite close today as well. Humid. There's mist in the air, but it's warm. So it's clammy. That's a huge bumblebee I just spotted. Which is a little bit uncomfortable. I will have to 
I'll roll up my shirt sleeves in a minute. Here we go, look at this, I'm steaming in to the challenge, which I think I have to go up there actually. See that guy up there? He's on the path I meant to go on. I've kind of taken this path. I've taken this path here and I need to get up on a path that goes up there. So, back I go. It didn't feel right because it was, it kind of goes up and around the edge of that cliff top. And I looked at uh, the overhead map, the satellite view, and that's definitely the path I want to be on. But, you know, blinking, you could miss it. That's the excuse I'm going with anyway. You can't be a shortcut. Oh, there's a, a shortcut that way and there's another shortcut this way, so. Cutting things short is what I'm all about. People coming down. This particular moor is famous for this stuff here. This is cotton. It's growing wildly. And apparently there's a lot of it on this moor. Amazing, really. I am very conscious of the fact that this all looks quite samey. <laughs> I can't do anything about that. It's moorland. Although kind of a remote environment, right up close to a, a, a town, a small town. So all the locals come here to walk their dogs. <clears throat> and I don't think you could go 10 minutes before you see somebody approaching with a dog, not in a lead. How lucky are you if you're somebody who is able to get access to this, you know, as and when you want. It's so quiet. There's a moor hen just there, which I don't have a zoom lens, so I can't really show you it. Either that or a baby grouse. And just ahead here is a cairn. There it is. Pile of stones placed there by people. I kind of feel I want to put another stone in the very top. <clears throat> I've never been one for following the crowd. You can see how this here is all heather, this dark stuff, and then the green stuff ahead is bracken. I sound like an expert. I'm not. <laughs> oh, there's somebody coming up behind me. I'll show you the bracken in a bit more detail in a sec. There you go. That's what bracken looks like. Ah, this is a nice bit. So I've just let those two ladies there bath past. Looking at those two ladies, it's interesting because I was in the car park <laughs> when they, I was already getting set up in the car park when they arrived. We didn't say a word to each other. But when we pass on a pathway in a moor, it's hiya. <laughs> aren't people, aren't we weird that we do that? It's the same with canal boating life. <laughs> you get on a canal boat, suddenly you're saying hello to everybody. In fact, it's the same if you live in a village in Scotland, because I remember, uh, you know, you would never pass somebody in, a, on, in the street in Scotland. I don't say hello to them in the village. And then when we moved to Yorkshire, when I was a kid, I was saying hello to strangers in the high street and everyone thought I was a lunatic. Like, What's he saying hello to me for? What the, what is he, is he, is he mental? <clears throat> I 
Now I'm not, I am not an expert on it on, by any, <laughs> at all, <laughs> at all. <laughs> by any, I'm just not. And uh, I keep seeing animals and birds and things that make very distinctive noises that aren't familiar to me. So I know they're particular to where I am, like that. And it just makes me want to look them up. So although I say now I'm no expert, I'm wondering, you know, by season three or four of making these films, maybe I will be an expert. Maybe you will too, as you learn with me. <laughs> but as, as things stand, all I know is Heather, Bracken, and I think they're called Cairns. Talking of which, there's another one. What is the thinking? Formed over decades. It's a very interesting cairn right ahead on the horizon, which actually looks like a person. I keep stopping and looking around, which I think annoys people when they see me ahead because they're just walking, they're not stopping. I'm sucking it up, I love it. Plus it keeps me going at my pace, which is slow. With me today, oh, these are quite hilly. With me today is my trusty stick. I brought this one with me today. It folds up into little sections, so it's stuck at the minute. And I have an attachment on the end for the camera, which I was using, but it became more of a hindrance. I'm still very much trying to work out, you know, making these films the best way to equip myself. And I've bought pouches and bum bags and like fly fishing waistcoats. And they're just all ridiculous. I just need the camera, a microphone and me. The random post just stuck there. Oh no, it's a signpost. Millennium Way circular walk. I do need to check though that I'm actually going the right direction. Oh, I actually have to walk across the water. Look at this. Right. I wonder if that's fresh. I wonder if you could drink that water. What do you think? Oh, well, that's interesting. Although there's a, a little staircase there, a, there's a path around the edge, which is actually, it's actually a lot easier to go along these uh, paths instead of the steps that people build. Oh, oh, it's actually a paved route. That's where I came from. I think these paving stones, these slabs of stone are here to protect the moor really. I can see it getting very destroyed. And in fact, the 12 Apostles Stone Circle, which we're going to go and see, is down has been the most desecrated prehistoric monument in the UK. Apparently the stones were knocked over. There used to be a lot more of them. 12 remain. And nobody knows who, but apparently overnight the stones were erected again by somebody. So 12 remain standing. And I've been given the name the 12 Apostles. Let me just do a quick check that I'm going in the right direction. Hmm. Oh, slight left. Well, we've just moved off the main pathway into a different kind of marshland, really, with these reeds straddling each side of the pathway. I can't help thinking about Lord of the Rings. I was thinking about 
how they're, they're about quests, they're about journeys. But they didn't capture in any of the films anyone being out of breath. There was no sense of the strain, the physical strain of the journey. And I think that's a lot to do with it. You know, the hurdles that you face is all part of it. I can't think of any scenes with Gandalf going, ah, ah, woo. okay, off we go. At this stage in my trekking career, for me, the challenge is putting one foot in front of the other, let alone on an incline. Hold on, Bilbo. Hi, Dad, mate. Hold on. I'm getting my breath back here. Woo. Woo. The dwarfs are miles back, man. Tiny legs. Oh, man. Oh, how much further is it? Woo wee. All right, off we go. There are three people jogging their way towards me. <laughs> Show offs. Hiya, hello. I can still hear them from here talking. <laughs> That's good friends, that is. Because they're all talking at the same time, which is, you would never get me doing. Somebody else is talking, I'm out. <laughs> and this pole marks the top of this climb. It's only a little one. But, oh, this is fantastic. It's warm, it's very warm. Ooh, a, a signpost. Ah, it says, welcome to Burley Moor. <coughs> welcome to Burley Moor. Dogs must be on lead because of nesting birds and no cycling on Burley Moor. Well, I need to correct my facts about these stones. So now that I've learned they're not on Ilkley Moor, they're on Burley Moor. So well, I understand it's all one big sheet of land. The guy just passed me there, said the standing stones just ahead on the left. And there's a path peeling off. In fact, I can see them, amazing. Oh, amazing. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love stuff like this. Just peeling off here. And here are the standing stones. Absolutely fantastic. It's only a small stone circle. It's <laughs> It has a bit of spinal tap to it, I do admit. There's a bit of <laughs> spinal tap to the size of these, this kind of mini stone hinge, but I don't think it is a hinge. But these stones are just so old. They've been placed here so long ago. I mean, they've been moved and uprighted and knocked over and uprighted again. It's like little bits of residue of life that's thousands of years old. Every single day for thousands of years, these stones have stood in some state or other, been on this site, placed here by people. That's phenomenal. There's kind of a sadness to these things as well, because these obviously meant something to people at some point. Now they don't mean anything to anybody. You know, visitors will pass by these and go, oh, look, a stone circle. 
oh yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Okay, off we go. And I don't, I don't blame them, you know. These don't mean anything to us now. But for me, it's the time. The time scales are mind blowing and make you feel so small and that the life you've got is so short. I love it. I, I can't tell you how much I love st stone circles or standing stones generally. Any, any information, anything that's been left by prehistoric, prehistory people is, is, is such a mystery because, you know, by the very definition, prehistory means it's, we don't have any information. Not really. Nothing was written down. I nearly said we don't have anything concrete, but that'd be uh, inappropriate considering where I am. There's one looks a bit like a, a gravestone. You wonder what these looked like originally. Here's a triangular one over here. So the shape doesn't seem to, to matter too much. And the thing is, these, uh, I don't know, when would the, these have been discovered, I wonder? I suppose they've always been known to be here. I guess all through time people have wandered on this moor. Well, that about wraps it up on this journey out to the Twelve Apostles. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, goodbye.